Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of the award-winning podcast, Entrepreneurs on Fire, and you're listening to the Excelsior Journeys with George Soroy. Prepare to ignite. Is there a burning desire within to share your creativity with the rest of the world? Do you insist on pursuing your passion by any means necessary? Then you are on an Excelsior journey, and you are not alone. Welcome back to Excelsior Journeys. My name is George Soroy. Thank you so much for being here for the latest episode in the Winding Trails Media Podcasting Network page. Some of you may have seen the revamped version of the network page on Podbean. Uh, looking forward to your feedback on that. Hope you like the new logo. Hope you are enjoying the syndicated episodes of Winding Trail of uh, Right Pack Radio and also the Exploration Beyond show with David Allen Lucas, president of the St. Louis Writers Guild. I hope that all of the episodes here have been inspiring, motivating, and I hope you've been listening, hope you've been downloading, liking, commenting, sharing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Just in case you are an iTunes subscriber, we have gone ahead and resubmitted the feed to iTunes. We had a little bit of technical difficulties that were pointed out to me earlier this week. Uh, thank you to Luke Annand for, for letting me know about this. And for those of you who are in the St. Louis area, I am looking forward to seeing you during Father's Day weekend over at Gateway Con, the latest of the St. Louis Writers Guild uh, writing conference and convention. It's going to be a great weekend. Looking forward to seeing you at the Renaissance Airport Hotel. And if you're in the Hannibal area, looking forward to seeing you there on the second Saturday in July, I will be speaking with, uh, to the Hannibal Writers Guild about audiobooks and podcasting. It's going to be a great time. Um, some of you who may have seen the movie The Mask of Zorro uh, may remember this line that uh, Don Diego de la Vega said, when the pupil is ready, the master will appear. And I kind of feel that way this uh, for this week's episode because uh, my guest just happened to literally fall into my lap today. Not literally, literally fall into my lap, but, you know, just uh, by some strange notion, um, I just happened to have seen on Facebook a call to post a URL of my author page and do like this whole like for like thing. I've spoken about these things before and how the writing community in social media really supports each other, uh, motivates each other, learns from each other. This was that case. It was a case of someone saying, drop your link. Let's all support each other. I did that. And I not only introduced myself as a, as an author of YA sci-fi, but also as the host of this podcast, which led, uh, which led a uh, wonderful uh, woman named Ch- uh, Chastity Eason, if I remember that correctly. Um, Chastity, if you are listening, uh, thank you so much for answering the call of, uh, of me <laughs> and uh, reaching out to me and everything and uh, letting me know that, uh, that you work for an author that has 13 books out there now of various genres with five more coming out this year. And it turns out that uh, she has been doing this since 2011. Now, some of you may know that uh, when I was working on my last book, Ever Upward, which is part two in the Excelsior journey, it took five years off and on to get that done. And I am looking for a much tighter schedule for part three. So I am so thrilled with the opportunity for me to learn from this author. And so it is a thrill for me to introduce our guest for this week, author Jessica McBrayer. Jessica, how are you tonight? I'm great. Thank you, George, for having me. And thank you so much for being here on such short notice. Um, I am really looking forward to uh, to our conversation. This is a rare this is a rare treat with uh, with the Excelsior Journeys podcast because the majority of guests. Is, are, are people that I have known at some point in my life. This is us meeting for the first time ever. And I'm really thrilled that, uh, that I finally get this opportunity to meet someone for the first time ever, interviewing them for my show. Uh, so this is going to be a whole lot of fun. Um, now, we always start off each show with, uh, with a little hint of what is in the, ver- in the immediate future for my guests. So uh, what is, uh, what's currently 
what are you currently preparing for uh, tonight? Sure. Um, this, I'm going a bit out on a limb right now. In the past, I've written paranormal romance, and I, um, it's funny, I, I read my first hockey romance, and I started to fall in love with hockey. My husband's always liked it, but I was, you know, said, I don't want to watch. And <laughs> as I started reading more, I started watching more hockey and have become this avid fan now and decided, you know what, I'm going to write a hockey romance. So I sat down and it just poured out of me. And I ended up with, I have four and a half. The fifth one is still in process of writing. And um, in over a year, I, I did them all. And wow. that's really fast for me, I have to say. So that's not usual. But um, yeah, so that's what I have coming out this year. The first one comes out June 23rd. Mm -hmm. It's for, it's for pre-order on Amazon right now. And um, it's the beginning of the series. What's it called? The first one? The first one's called Jude's Sweet Fire. And the series is called the Savannah Heat series. Nice. And so Savannah Heat is the fictional hockey team that I created. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And yeah, this is definitely a good time for it, considering that uh, I live in St. Louis and the Blues are one I game know. away from reaching the Stanley Cup final. <laughs> this is, yeah, you want to you talk about hockey fever, you know, like right now, you know, this is, this very, this reminds me very much of the time when I was, uh, when I was about to graduate from high school and my father came over to visit um, in 94 for the baccalaureate and graduation ceremonies because I was living in Richmond, Virginia. And he asked me flat out, it's like, how long does the baccalaureate usually take? And I was just like, I don't, I don't know. It's like maybe an hour or so. Why? What's going on? And he just goes, and he reminds me, game seven. It was game seven of the 94 Stanley Cup finals. And the Rangers were, you know, like we're one game away from ending a 54 year drought. And needless to say, you know, like as soon as that, as soon as uh, we got home, the two of us ran downstairs, we watched the game and that was the first of only one other instance where one of our teams won a title and we were in the same room to celebrate it. Oh. And so uh, that's, that to me was, was awesome. And the very next day was high school graduation. It was a good day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it was you, a can't, good... you can't see me right now, but I have my San Jose shark shirt on and you guys uh, whooped up on us tonight. So, well, and you know, like, and uh, I am still like, just, you know, very cautious, you know, like I've, I've kind of, you know, like I, I do appreciate and respect hockey and everything. I can't say I'm an avid follower, but I am, but I keep an eye on it and I'm thrilled to see this kind of enthusiasm for the blues. At the same time, I refuse to put any sort of title like around their necks until, yeah. you know, like until the very end. Um, I've, you know, been through it several times before, you know, like in, in other sports. So you never so know. What, yeah, exactly. You never know. You know, like, I mean, this was, this is basically, you know, this is basically the way, the way that uh, the Stanley Cup finals happened with Messi, with uh, the Rangers in 94. Mm -hmm. Rangers were down three to two. Mark Messier guaranteed they were going to win it and they wound up winning two straight, got onto mm -hmm. the finals. So yeah, you know, like um, that was, it was, it's, it's a hell of a time. I must say, yeah. so, that's, that's all I got to say about that. So best of luck with, uh, with, with game six. And, uh, you know, that's, um, that's all I got to say about that. So, uh, you know, um, I, I just, you know, we're, we're getting a good series and that's really like, that's, you know, that's all, always, a, always a plus there. So, yeah. um, I, so I, have, I have to say real quick, um, even though I, ha I love hockey, and I'm writing hockey romance. The books are really contemporary romances with a little bit of hockey in. So I don't want to turn people off of that, you know, that mm -hmm. don't know anything about hockey. Um, they still would enjoy the book um, because, it, you know, it, it just touches on the hockey. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's, that's fantastic though. So, um, so now from this, we go all the way back to the beginning, you know, and I, st mm -hmm. I still can't believe that all the way back means 2011, like the, <laughs> the volume of work that you've put out is just, you know, is blowing my mind. So before we do anything, I have to ask, what's your average work count for the, for, for these books? Um, let's see, these, these hockey romances have been just under a hundred thousand. They're around 96,000, somewhere in there. Wow. So about three 
350, 370 pages. That's pretty long for me. Yeah. Um, normally it's about 250 to 270, the other books. And then That's... I wrote, yeah, one series has every other book is a novella of about 120, yeah. 150 pages. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's still like, I mean, that sort of, that sort of productivity is just blowing my mind. So, um, so let's go back to, you know, 2011 or 2010, 2009, like around that time, mm -hmm. what was your lightning bolt moment? What was it that made you fall in love with writing in the first place? Um, it's kind of a difficult topic for me. I, first of all, in high school, I had a teacher that took me aside and said, you need to do this. And I fell in love with it then. But I kind of put it aside and went to college for biology, completely different from what I'm doing now. Right. And got married, had children. And my daughter got a really terrible disease. And I became a full-time caregiver for like eight years. Oh, wow. And she went into remission. Mm -hmm. And when that happened, I realized I didn't know who I was anymore. I had no identity because I had been this caregiver for all this time and I didn't know what to do with myself. And um, I got, I had these ideas and I, I salvaged this computer that no one wanted to use because it was like 20 years old practically mm -hmm. and sat down and wrote my first book. And yes. it was wonderful. It was published two weeks before my daughter passed away. Oh, and then and that was for the stain series it's about a witch and it wasn't the first book i wrote actually it was the second um the first book i wrote was called sucking in san francisco and it's a vampire book with a genie and and everything in between and um one of the characters was named after my daughter and kind of modeled after her yeah. so that was the second book um i published and then I followed it up right away with a novella that was just based on that character. And so every other book was a novella on that character. It, it of course brought everybody in, but it focused on her. And mm -hmm. I had so much, I think it was a really healing thing for me and really enjoyable. And it was a way to make her come back to life a little bit. Yeah. So I, um, boy, I don't know how many years I went through that. There's eight books in that series. And at the same time, I was writing the Stain series. And there's four books so far there. I need to write the fifth book, the final book. But um, mm -hmm. probably five or six years it took me to do all that. And uh, yeah. And then I took a little time off and um, started to get back into it. I, I have another series that I'm working on. But um it's still, I don't know, maybe 50 pages in. It's still in the planning stages. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so that's how I came to love it and came to really be invested in it. it uh, I became a writer, you know, yeah. and that, that was what I could call myself. And that was just a very um, important thing for me. Wow. I, yeah. Man. Um, yeah, this definitely, yeah, I... I Having, you know, having, having lost my cousin back in 2005 um, and going through a period where, you know, like where I made that decision that I was going to name my main character after him, mm. you know, it's, 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 you know, it's, it, it really is like a, a, a means of like, you know, like kind of coming to grips with everything. You know, so yes. I, I, can't, I can't imagine, you know, that you know, having to go through that with your daughter. I'm so sorry to hear about that. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. And yeah, so, um, but that's, that's amazing that you were able to channel that, you know, into, you know, the way that you, the way that you did. Um, what was it back, you, you said that it was uh, back in high school when your, your teacher approached you and said, you need to do this. Yeah. Uh, what sort of, what sort of activities were you doing in high school that really got their attention? Um, we were writing just papers. Um, we had started doing poetry and I'd never done any poetry before. And um, she sent a couple in and I won some contests over it and really, really enjoyed it. I stuck with poetry for a long time, even though I did like short essays in high school and in college. Um, but uh, well, not so much in college, a little bit here and there, but um mainly focused on the biology and there's not a lot of room for creative writing in that field. Um, so I 
like I said, I let it, I put it aside until um, that aha moment and decided, no, this is really something I want to try. So it was the first really long um, piece of work that I had done. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's, that's great. That's great. So, um, so, um, so tell us about the time that you gotten that first one finished. Like, cause you know, like you, you've, you know, did like a really good, you know, recap of overall, like, you know, how, how fast you were able to get through all of, you know, like the amount of books that you did. Mm -hmm. um, but what was that first one like? What was that feeling like once you were starting your, starting your journey of being a novelist? Mm -hmm. um, how did that, how did that feel like when you were able to, uh, when you were able to go through it? Like how many drafts did it take for you to like really get comfortable with it? Do you, um, what was that? What was that whole experience for you? It was, um, I had a lot of self doubt because I had mm -hmm. never done anything like this before. I had a lot of fun. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of humor in that series. And um, so I just had a really good time with it. My mother happens to be my editor, she, or was my editor. I, I, Chastity's my editor now, actually. But oh. um, yeah, my, um, my mother uh, is a writer and artist. And she he is ruthless. And um, <laughs> I can't even think of how many copies that how many drafts that first book had. It, it had quite a few, at least three or four. And yeah. Yeah, it was it was a process because I was learning. And um, during that time, I was seeking out ways to learn. And I found out about Romance Writers of America, RWA, mm -hmm. and that we had a chapter close by. And so I joined them and just being in that cocoon of um, wisdom, you know, that yeah. everybody brought to the table. It was just incredible and very, very supportive. And uh, that really helped me get through it, too. And, well, I can talk about it later, but one of the things um, available with RWA is online classes. And oh. I, I was just a junkie for those. <laughs> I, I, I took them from everything from um, Celtic mythology to um, how to prepare a query letter to writing your first draft and, you know, just soaking up that enrichment. And I think that had a lot to do with my encouragement throughout mm -hmm. the years and propelled me on and gave me a lot of ideas. And some of them I'm still going back to. And it was just a that it, the whole experience was really good. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. yeah um, having gone through, the, you know, different conventions and everything and conferences here, running a couple myself, you know, like at work with the Missouri Writers Guild, it's uh, mm. it's a great feeling to be in that, you know, that cocoon. That's, per that's a perfect way of saying it because it really is just like, you just feel like you're in the ultimate safe space you know like you yes. know you're all everyone that's around you they all are going through the exact feelings of like self-doubt and self-loathing and you know you know just yeah. wondering like you know am i ever going to get this down on, on the page the way that I, it's been in my head you know all those feelings they feel the same thing you know for their own you know like it's and it's a it's a really wonderful feeling knowing that you're not alone because yes. writing is such a disgustingly solitary job yes. um, that that chooses us you know more than more than us choosing it yeah. um, and so having gone through that you know like I, I get exactly what you know like what you mean by that and um, over here in st. Louis I've noticed that you are also uh, you've also been affiliated with sisters in crime and yes. we have a, we have a st. Louis chapter of those as well and uh, yeah they're they're a fun bunch I, they I, are. I <laughs> they really are. Yeah. Um, I didn't stay with them very long because I didn't quite fit the genre that they were most dedicated to. Mm -hmm. But um, I was close enough that I joined them in the first, you know, at first and absolutely loved them and have good friends out of there still. Um, but I was going to go back to something you said about being in that cocoon and that self-doubt and self-loathing and wondering what you're going to do. The beautiful mm -hmm. thing about these organizations is that you have people at every level. So yeah. you have a very successful that you see still doing that, but somehow they overcome it and mm -hmm. have become successful. So it gives you a lot of hope too, I think. So, yeah, yeah. that it definitely does. Yeah. So, yeah. um, so 
So what? So uh, break down for our listeners your team um, because everyone's always got one. There's always you know the beta readers. There's always the editor. You mentioned that uh, Chastity is now is now your editor. Um, yeah. So what uh, do you do? You self publish? Do you have a publisher? Um, what's your What's your background with that? Um, well, I self publish. I and I frankly, I didn't have the patience to go through all the querying and um, the length of time it takes to get a book published. I, I really self publishing was just starting, and I was really excited about it. And I thought, you know, no one's going to read this anyway, so I'll just put it out there. And mm -hmm. um, it started with Miss just me and my mom. And well, no, that's not true. I was in a critique group when I first started with RWA. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, and um, that was very supportive, and we critiqued each other's work, and that helped. And uh, but I was the only paranormal writer, so it was a little different. Mm -hmm. And my mom writes um, sci-fi YA. No kidding. And, uh, yeah, she's really good at it too, and uh, she has been an awesome cheerleader. And she's my publisher, and she was my editor forever. And oh wow. Yeah, someone I could bounce ideas off of. Um, mm -hmm. She still has a, a, a publishing company called Nessa Geckos, and we have a street team under that that we started. And I found Chastity on my street team. I had, uh, my mother doesn't have the time to do the editing anymore. Mm -hmm. um, she'll pitch in where she can, but it, it takes a lot of time. And she's trying to do her own stuff too. Yeah. And, um, Chastity and I tried it out. She's got a background in marketing and I soon learned that not only was she a good editor, but she would be an awesome virtual assistant. She lives clear across the country from me. You couldn't get further mm -hmm. away, Yeah. <laughs> but, but we connect constantly. Um, she's part of my tribe and one of my people, you know, we just really connect. And I think that's really important when you look for a team um, that you, you connect well with them. Uh, I'm having a little difficulty with the proofreader right now because um, mm -hmm. I'm having to find a new one. And I just, I took for granted how wonderful I'd had it up until now. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, so, um, so you say you self-published, do you have a cover artist as well that, uh, that handles? That, that is my mother as well. Really? Yes. She is um, a graphic designer and an artist and phenomenal. All my, all my sucking in San Francisco's were, um, drawn there. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you saw the cover or not, or if anyone will, but they're, they're fantastic. And, uh, the stain series was more photographic, but, um, again, um, just amazing. And these new, this new series that I'm doing Savannah heat mm -hmm. is, uh, more photographic trying to get into that, um, similar images that the genre has, although I refuse to do the ab pictures where they yeah. don't show the head and it's just like, Oh these, yeah. These, yep. uh, photoshopped abs and you now mine, mine are the faces and that's, um, so they're a little different and I don't yeah. know if that's going to hurt or help me, but, um, that's the beauty of self publishing. It's an experiment. Yeah. And, you, get to, and, you get to go with what works, you know, what, what yeah. you feel works, you know, like it, you're not, you may have to, I mean, there, there have been experiences. I know that, you know, like dealing with, uh, with self-publish, you know, some I self-publish works, you know, there were times when I did have to kind of settle for, you know, for a work that I did, you know, felt was, you know, it was there, but not quite, you know, like in my head. And then, mm -hmm. you know, it's, um, but, uh, but then, you know, getting that right, uh, that right cover designer to come up with that particular image that will, if it, if it's, you know, anything like, like my own experience, you know, it made me cry you know, when, yeah, when, I, yeah. when I saw it. I was just like, yes, that's, that's it. That is it. That's what I've been waiting for so long to see. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that kind of, that kind of feeling is uh, kind of feeling is fantastic. So that's great that you have. Um, I, I've like, been, that's amazing that, you know, your mother has like all those talents. Like, I mean, I like, know. That's, <laughs> she's my formatter. She's my uploader. I mean, everything. And, I and a book her. formatter. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what I'll do without her. She's wow. Just, I mean, thank goodness. She loves me because <laughs> 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 she's, she's really been there and it's for free. So, <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> you can't be that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
you know, my, uh, my content editor, you know, she and I have been working together for, you know, for quite a few years as well. And yeah, my, my books wouldn't be where they are without, without oh, her, no. in, you know, cause uh, she, the great thing, the great thing about editors and I'm, you know, I'm got a feeling that yours are, you know, like probably in the same boat, but uh, when it comes to those, you know, those story editors, um, they help with expanding your world so much because they just ask you all these different questions and mm-hmm. let you come up with the answers. They're not coming up with the answers on their own. You know, they're basically like throwing the ball to you because these are the things you don't really think about because you're too busy right. concentrating on the story. Right. You know, that's, uh, that's, that's what I've been through so much. So I'm sure that you've had experiences with that, you know, like working with your editors as well. Oh yeah. Playing, playing devil's advocate. You know, I think that's what they do. They just, they, they make you think. And sometimes you go along with the answer and sometimes you're like, no, I, I don't really think I want to go in that direction. And I, come across that with the street team too. Um, They're all my beta readers Mm -hmm. and some of them are really good about pointing things out and some just read to tell me if they enjoy it or not. You know, I get all kinds of feedback, but, um, but yeah, it it makes us grow as a writer too, I think, because in the next book we do, we start thinking in those terms a little bit more, you know, it, it it settles in a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, So so you, so what was that feeling like when you went through, you went through the first draft? How long did it take for you to get that first draft done, by the way? <laughs> Six weeks. Six weeks. Very nice. Okay. So not quite the, not quite the running time for like the Nat- National Novel Writing Month, you know, sprints, but <laughs> yeah, no, six weeks yeah. is great. Yeah. Yeah. It's have, you done, cool. uh, <laughs> have you done, have you done NaNoWriMo before as well? Yes, I have. Yeah. And, um, but I don't take it as, um. I'm not as disciplined with it as a lot of people are. I usually start a book out with it. Mm-hmm. And like I said, uh, six weeks is really fast for me. It's usually two or three months and um, or longer. It just depends on the book and how it's coming out. Sometimes I just can't get my head around it, you know, and, and uh, it'll take me longer to do it. But um, NaNoWriMo is great. I, I love it and what it stands for. But yeah, the first book took six weeks. So, um, like I said, I just had the story sitting in my head, and it just kind of poured out. Yeah. Yeah. And how much uh, how much editing time did you wind up taking with that? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> it took it took a couple months um, and several drafts, like I was talking about. And it was funny because it's a romance, and there's love yeah. scenes in it. And and I my mom was my editor, and here she's oh boy. Reading- Sex scenes that I wrote, yes, and a little, <laughs> little awkward. Awkward dinner table around. conversation, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we got around it, and uh, yeah. That's great, yeah. So, um, so through that, you know, like it, so it comes out. What was your what was the initial feeling and everything once it was edited? You had the cover design taken care of. You had the formatting done. You had it basically all set and out there into the world, what happens next? You know, and that's such a great question because we're going through that process right now because when I was first um, published, like I said, it was kind of a new thing and there weren't tons. I mean, there's like millions of people doing it now and um, Mm -hmm. it was easier to get your name out there a little bit. I did take a couple ads out like in book gorilla and fussy librarian, some online, Mm -hmm. um, book uh people that took online booksellers or whatever you want to call them i can't think of the name right now but um, right that helped um sales but i was just incredibly lucky and the first books did really well but now um it's really died down because i haven't published in a while and Mm -hmm. i found that you really need to publish if you want to keep your name up there and so we're we're going through this whole thing with um Uh, it's a new series and it's a new direction for me. So we're doing a lot of marketing and um, trying to do it as inexpensively as possible because Mm -hmm. don't have a huge marketing budget yet. You have to sell books to have that. Right. A lot of books. And um, so we're doing that. Uh, We're thinking about relaunching the other two series and doing some updates to them, like some bonus material, maybe something like that would get people's interest and so that's going to be a whole different thing and that'll probably start after um these releases are done uh one thing at a time kind of 
Yeah. Are you getting like new cover art along with that as, as well? well? Yeah, we debated that. And I just love my cover so much. Maybe in the Stain series, a few of them, but I think the Sucking series are just, um, my mother said they could be refreshed and mm -hmm. she, um, she knows what she's talking about with that. So I'm kind of leaving it in her hands, but I told her I really liked what we had. So I wanted to stick to it as much as possible. So I, I, I foresee some refreshments, a little changes in them, but not significant. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. So, um, so I noticed on your site that you, and based on, you know, based on what you said in the interview already so far tonight, um, you're in various genres. What is it about those genres that appeal to you? Um, I've always, when I was younger, I think I read my first Stephen King book in fourth grade mm -hmm. and have been an avid fan ever since. Love the which, paranormal. Which one was it? Um, I think it was, um, was it, is it called Silver Bullet? It, okay, with the werewolf one. Yeah, the werewolf right. one. Yeah, and went on. And the stand is my favorite out of all mm -hmm. of them. And yeah. um, went on to like sci-fi, and um, I didn't read my first romance book until my sister and my mother were huge romance fans, and uh, I always made fun of them. I was terrible <laughs> because that was so opposite of what I read, and yeah. I didn't start to read them until after college, and um, and really you know, they tell you to write what you read. And mm -hmm. so I had to have that paranormal, paranormal element in there. All right. I, I wouldn't have never, I would have never felt comfortable writing the books I did if I hadn't. And that's kind of where the hockey's coming from now. It, it's a, um, a fun part of my life. And I thought, you know, I, I want to, I want to do this. I'm going to try this. So. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah, that's that's a great way to do it. So, um, so all the different genres you said, you know, there's paranormal, uh, paranormal romance, mm -hmm. and then there's contemporary romance, right? And then there is, um, you have horror as part of that as well. Well, <clears throat> I haven't really put a lot of horror in mine. Um, suspense. Mm -hmm. I've had um, a lot of suspense. Um, I don't seem to be able to write a book without putting some big catastrophe in there and um so i've just accepted that because at first i thought you know this is a hockey romance nobody needs to be heard in it but somehow it just happens so um yeah. it's a little spoiler but um i uh i think it's in my blurb it's kind of working blurb right now but um i think we put a little bit about that in there too so yeah nice Nice. So mm -hmm. if you had, if you had to pick just like one particular genre to really kind of stick to for a, a long period of time, is mm -hmm. there one that you feel you can, or is there, or is it just like, you just have to kind of let your, let your stories dictate wherever they're going to wind up being? Oh boy, that's a tough question. I would have to say, <clears throat> I think I always feel most comfortable in paranormal mm -hmm. and um, like I said, I've got another new series coming out. It's paranormal. Mm -hmm. uh, this was something I just felt I had to, I just felt like I wanted to write this new series. I read a lot of contemporary romance, but I don't think it's going to be the genre that I stick with. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I'll eventually go back to paranormal and probably stay there, but it will always be paranormal romance. Cause I, I, I like adding that element to it. Um, I like reading YA as well, but mm -hmm. again, um, this new series that I'm <clears throat> having in the back of my mind called Stone Chronicles, it, uh, it involves gargoyles. Oh, nice. And, yeah, and it all happens in Europe, and um, so it's taken me a little bit of research and time to get into it, and it's a lot of world building. Um, it's practically a YA, I, I would definitely call it a new adult it kind of is on that border. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's taking me longer because I'm used to dealing with grownups, you know, I, not that the characters aren't very mature, but um, I'm used to dealing with late twenties or vampires that are 300 years old or you know, right. things, <laughs> things like that. So yeah. it's, it's a new direction too, but it, it's still that paranormal. Now you mentioned uh, Stephen King before Stephen King is well known for having 
kind of like a Stephen King universe. There are you know yes. different characters that know different characters and you know are familiar with other instances of what's happened in his previous stories. Now I know you have like some you know definite series, mm -hmm. but do you have like your own universe where they all tie into each other in some way or little crossover all just like their own, or are they are they like their own separate thing and that's it um they so far they've been their own separate thing um mm -hmm. and because for one in stained my main co character thorn is a witch and she would never tolerate a vampire so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and in um in my second in san francisco series with the vampires um the witches are bad so okay uh so there couldn't be any crossover there but i'm not going to leave that out as something that could potentially happen in the future nice nice yeah, yeah it was just like just happened to have turned on you know like a character from you know like a vampire turning on a television there's a savannah heat game going and you know just there uh, you go there you go <laughs> <laughs> so um so you said that you have a virtual assistant which is something that i've always kind of looked at would love to have and everything but at the same time i've always been wondering exactly how that sort of relationship builds mm -hmm. what exactly you know does um does she does she do for you oh my gosh what doesn't she do for me it, it this is something new for me too we've only been working together a couple months mm -hmm. um it, like you it was something i always wanted because i didn't have time to do the marketing and the social media and write too yeah. and um it was either one or the other for me because i didn't have a lot of time i'm doing it full time now so that helps but i don't like doing some of it so yeah. that's what chastity does and she has got this marketing background and it's just amazing she's always like today um connecting the two of us that is just right. something that um she is just really good at she's always looking for ways to promote for ways to make connections she mm -hmm. built a fan page for me so now now i have four pages i have my personal page on facebook i have an mm -hmm. author page on facebook I've got a page called Jessica McBrayer's Bucanistas, and then we have our street team. That's great. So, yeah, it's a, it's a <laughs> lot of fun. It's a lot of work to keep up with it too. So she's she's been doing that, and she's just been awesome, um, helping me build that, helping it get back up to speed because I wasn't posting very often. And right. she's um, she's my taskmaster. She keeps me on track and. I just, I love the idea she comes up with. I think it's very important when you're looking for a personal assistant that you get along really well because you're constantly brainstorming and it has to be someone that kind of gets you and where you yeah. want to go, where you yeah. want to go. Definitely. Because she sees the future and um, I'm sometimes really stuck in the middle or in my own world. <laughs> so <laughs> it really helps. Yeah. She keeps me in line and I absolutely love her. That's fantastic. That is, and she, yeah, based on our brief conversation before hooking the two of us up, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I can tell that she is, she is somebody who definitely knows what she's doing and uh, is very well tuned into this area as a virtual yeah. assistant. It sounds like she's yeah. doing a, she, that sounds like she's doing a terrific job for you. And that's, she is. Know, yeah. kudos, and kudos to her for, for, do, for doing so. So Jesse, if you're listening, you know, awesome job. Keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, one thing I want to say is, you know, when you're looking for help in whatever mm -hmm. way you're looking for, you got to look at your budget too. Yeah. And we decided we could do a certain number of hours a week. And she is wonderful with sticking in those hours and working with us on our budget too. And mm -hmm. so uh, props to Chastity. She's available for other authors too, just letting everybody know. But um, she's uh, starting with us and we're very greedy. We don't <laughs> <laughs> I it's like we're happy she's you know, like yeah we want we want we want to put the word out that she's available but you know she's not that available yeah exactly <laughs> yeah exactly so your productivity just blows my blows me away it's um it's very much in line with um author uh michelle lynn um mm -hmm. the sort of the way that you know she can just churn out a chapter a day um mm -hmm. just you know it it it's 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 something that I am wonderfully you know like uh, 
in awe of and envious of at the same time, considering <laughs> how much of a slog that it was f- to get um, to get uh, my latest book, which was a sequel, um, mm-hmm. done and out um, in a five year span. Uh, now, granted, it wasn't fully you know five years and that you know like working mm-hmm. on nothing but that because it was. It was during that period. It's when um, part one got picked up by a different publisher. So I added more material for that and then um, was working on the five part serial that I was working on. And then that finally got done. Then I had to jump back into this one. And, um, and then all of a sudden the publisher I was working with closed down. And then another publisher came in and said, we really like your, uh, this first one. Um, well, it can be better. Do you mind if our editor takes a look at it? She took a sledgehammer to it, and, <laughs> and I spent a couple of months, you know, like rewriting that. So my focus was constantly going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth yeah. from, you know, different things. So um, that makes I, it really hard. Really, it, hard. It, it does. It does make it make it really hard. But at the same time, though, I'm still um, blown away by your productivity. Do you have like a set schedule? for writing you said that you're doing this full time but yeah before before you were able to make that transition to a full-time uh to a full-time authorship um did you start did you have like a specific set of, a block of time that you just were able to keep sacred um I, you know i everybody's journey is different i i will say that first out because my mom has had been working on hers um for quite some time and Mm -hmm. i think it's absolutely perfect right now but she's not quite happy with it so she'll keep working on it you know and um me like stephen king he's got this set i don't know if you've ever read his book on writing but it's oh yeah yeah it's fascinating and he he writes two thousand words a day and sometimes Mm -hmm. he gets that done in a couple hours sometimes it takes until the end of the day and um I'm one of those lucky people that can type really fast and mm-hmm. I, I'm a pantser, so I don't worry about how perfect it is the first time around. And, mm. um, 2000 words is really easy for me. And I get yeah. that out probably in two hours at least, you know, at minimum. And, um, yeah. at my best, I've gotten 7,000 words a day. That's not usual for me <laughs> but it, it has happened before and oh yeah there are always but, those moments where it's just like right. where it just spills out and you're like do i stop no keep right. going keep going <laughs> it's like my fingers ache my back hurts sitting in this chair but i'm gonna keep typing and right um, but i try to keep at least two hours a day and i know that doesn't sound like a lot of time for someone that's doing it full time but there's also research that goes into it there's also even though i wasn't doing a lot of marketing there's still marketing that goes into it um editing i might be editing something else at the same time there's conferring with my mom over covers um so Mm -hmm. all of that you know it's not a nine to five job by any means i don't work that many hours but um but i am able to put as much time into it as i want and try to do at least two hours a day usually what it is is two hours in the morning two hours in the afternoon or evening it just kind of fits well for me like that nice. um, but I, i'm not like i said i'm a pantser i'm not really disciplined i'm probably the worst person ever to give advice about that <laughs> <laughs> i don't know you know i mean from what i can see the work is really is speaking for itself um that mm-hmm. sort of that that sort of productivity just you know, it is incredible. So um, many, many kudos to you for being able to keep up to that. Um, so, um, so are you like the first one up and you're able to do that? Or are you able to just, you know, when everyone else is up, are you able to just kind of lock yourself in a room or something? Or what's your... No, um, I usually get up about 4.30 in the morning and... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why my body works that way, but that's what's <laughs> don't question it. Don't question it. It's <laughs> yep, not a smile. <laughs> exactly. It's nice and quiet in the house. Sometimes I just type with nothing on, but usually I like to listen to music while I type. Mm-hmm. And um, I just get in the zone then and go until everybody's up and eating breakfast. And then I stop and have some breakfast. Sometimes I go back to it again. Um, and like I said, I shouldn't say. Uh, at least two hours a day, but often it'll be more than that. And um, so, yeah, I, I like that where the house is quiet and no one's up and stirring yet. And I can just have my own time. 
make my cup of Fabulous. coffee. Here. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, you're, so you're a coffee drinker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, coffee and tea, but mostly coffee. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, so what uh, what kind of advice do you have for the the you know aspiring author who just has a story in mind has the burning desire to get that story out but has no idea of what the first thing that they would need to do is what kind of advice do you have for those for those people the best advice i can give is the same thing that I did and I had encouragement to do it cause I didn't know where to begin either, but mm -hmm. um, just write that first sentence. You've yeah. got to start somewhere and you can go back and change it. And I was always told I can change anything I write. And I, I had put so much pressure on myself that I was afraid to start. You know, mm -hmm. I, I wanted it to be perfect and, and you know, it, it's not perfect the first time. It just, uh, it's not going to be cause you're trying something new and you're learning. So right. my best advice would just be write that first sentence and go from there. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, where can, um, where can our listeners find you on social media? Um, like I, know you, I know you mentioned that you had like the other pages. Yeah, um, on Facebook and I'm on Instagram as Jessica McBrayer mm -hmm. and I'm on, <laughs> I was a little spacey. I had an account on Twitter and mm -hmm. then I couldn't, couldn't remember what my login and everything was. So I started a new account. So okay. I have two accounts on Twitter, but I'm not very active on it. So I oh, it's understandable. Yeah. yeah it's it's what, what kind of a cesspool right there. now. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Instagram, I like to post more real life pictures, you know, my mm -hmm. cat, my dog, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Facebook's probably the best place to find me. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Um, this is uh, this has really been just. I mean, this hour really just kind of you know flew by. Um, I'm uh, really thrilled that you were able to uh, sit down on again on such short notice and have this have this conversation. I really you know just wish you the absolute best with everything that uh, that you have going on, and I really hope that uh, that all of you have felt just as motivated as I have uh, just by, just by talking, just by talking with Jessica, by listening to uh, her journey, listening to um, see, just to basically just hear how everything has, has unfolded for her and how they continue to develop. Um, it's great to have, uh, have such an amazing team in your corner. It really sounds like, uh, like she's, she's got that and she is, definitely putting in the work as well. So um, again, I, I am just so thrilled for all of her success and I wish her nothing but more of it in the future. And I wish all of you nothing but success. So for Jessica McBrayer, this is George Soroy saying to all of you, Ever Upward, and I'll see you next week. Today's show is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. If you've never been an Audible customer and want to see what they offer, just go to www.audibletrial.com slash Excelsior Journeys and browse the unmatched selection of audio programs, download a title for free, and start listening. It's that easy. Why Audible? Audible content includes an unmatched selection of audiobooks, original audio shows, news, comedy, and more from the leading audiobook publishers, broadcasters, and entertainers. And with this free 30-day trial, you'll have your pick of it all. You can hear books of all genres narrated by Jim Dale, Stephen Fry, Will Patton, Alex Hyde-White, Jeff Brick, Neil Shaw, William Demerit, and even a few by me, George Soroy. So go to www.audibletrial.com slash Excelsior Journeys and start your own 30-day journey with Audible today.